Alright, so my name is Nicholas Tradici, and um, I'm an assistant professor in the School of Computing and Information Science here at UMaine. What happened? Um, so I uh, did my undergraduate work at Providence College and went to graduate school at the University of Minnesota in Cognitive and Biological Psychology. Um, I then went, uh, did a postdoc at University of California, Santa Barbara in Cognitive Neuroscience and I came uh, to University of Maine in 2008. Um, and since then I've started the Virtual Environment and Multimodal Interaction Lab, which is a long name, you can call it the Vimy Lab. Um, and uh, I, I teach here in the School of Computing and Information Science. And do research on uh, how we learn about and act in space using different senses, vision, touch, hearing, uh, and the like. Um, technology plays a huge role in, in both the research that I do in, in the type of research that I do that is, is very technically based. But in terms of assistive technology, uh, it's played a big role in access to information. So my computer speaks, so everything that you see on your screen that's text-based I hear through synthetic speech, and so accessing everything from documents to email to going on the web is all done through this, what's called a, a, a screen reader, uh, which you can think of as kind of a text-to-speech engine, but instead of just reading documents, it also allows me to go into the menus and track where the, where the cursor is, uh, uh, you know, in dialog boxes and, and doing system functions as well as just reading documents. And so this has made it possible to um, you know, access a huge amount of information, a huge amount of uh, text-based information that otherwise you wouldn't be able to use or access, or that you would need to have in Braille, which is um, this this book is an example of Braille, which is hard copy output, similar you'd get if you printed a you know a print document. Uh, but the problem is that Braille is huge; it's very it's it's very large. It, they call a junior dictionary. I remember growing up was 22 volumes that were each twice as thick as this. Um, and it's not dynamic, so you couldn't go on the web and you'd have to print everything out or braille everything out and then read it. So by having technology, um, auditory so screen reading technology, you know, it provides access to, to a huge amount of uh, material that's critical for, you know, my work as a researcher and as a professor and reading articles and, and, and you know, writing articles and, uh, you know, reading people's papers as well as just doing my own uh, you know, or want to go home and look something up on the internet. Um, another important piece of technology is a uh, what you can think of as a portable note taker, almost like a uh, a laptop, but it has um, Braille input, a Braille keyboard, which is consists of just uh, six or eight keys. Can you hold that up? Yeah. There? So this is a Braille keyboard here. These are how you type. Instead of having a one-to-one -one correspondence, like having the A and a B key, you do different combinations of keys to make uh, to, to make the letters, which is called a corded keyboard. It's similar to what a court stenographer would use when, when taking uh, notes. And then this is a Braille uh, display, so you can see how the it's it changes as I scroll through. These dots are changing, so it's coming up. Instead of having a fixed book like this, it's called a dynamic or refreshable Braille display. So it's using little piezoelectric elements that change as I go through a document. Right now I'm scanning through a menu. So it's saying database, internet, Bluetooth manager. So I'm going through, as I'm scrolling through, like you might do with the mouse, it's putting up these these dots. And you can use this for, again, reading documents, taking notes. When I, when I teach class, I read my notes off this. It also speaks. So um, I have it turned off right now. But like the screen reader I talked about on the computer, this device has a uh, 